بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك منشر علينا خزاء نعلمك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we study lesson nine, which is about worshiping God. <coughs> you know, in the Quran, we have some verses about the reason for creation. One which is very famous is verses 56 and 57. 57 of chapter 51. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wa al-insa illa liya'budun. Ma uridu minhum min rizqin. Wa ma uridu an yut'ahun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created jinns nor human beings except liya'budun. Many people translate this except to worship me, liya'budun, because ibadah means to worship. Salamah. Wa ma uridu minhum min rizqin. I don't want them to give me sustenance. Wa ma uridu an yut'amun, or feed me. Okay? So it's not that I have need for them, and I want them to do something for me so that I can meet my needs. This is for their own benefit. Now the question is, what is Leya'budun? Is it worship or it is more? For sure, worshiping God is very important. What is worshiping? If you think about a good definition of ibadah, what is worship? Worship, if you really understand the core of worship, means unconditional obedience. Worship can be expressed by doing some actions like, you know, ruku, sujood, I don't know, for example, uh, tawaf. These are acts of worship, but they are just expressions. If someone doesn't have that core, these expressions are not considered as ibadah. Ibadah is your total devotion or obedience to your ma'bud. Ma'bud is not the one that we just, you know, bend in front of him or touch, for example, you know, uh, as, you know, idol worshippers who used to touch, for example. No, ibadah means unconditional, absolute obedience. Okay? It can be expressed by some actions. This is ibadah. We have these common practices, common act acts of worship in all Abrahamic religions. Prayer is a common act of worship. Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam. All the prophets, they had salat. All the prophets, had zakat. Siyam. Kutiba alaykum. Siyam. Kama kutiba ala ladina. Min qabakum. So these are common acts of worship. But I think. Liya'budun can mean something more than worship. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created us just to become worshiper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to become abd, servant. There is a difference between worshiper and servant, between abd and abd. Liyabudun can mean to worship me or can mean to serve me. And this is different. Just if you look at our lives, we can say we worship God. Yeah? But can we say we are servants of God? We have ibadah, but do we have ubudiyah? Ubudiyah, servitude, or it was, you know, some people say servanthood, servitude, is much more than ibadah. We say about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Not abadahu wa rasuluh. We don't say, we bear witness that the Prophet worshipped God. <coughs> we say he was a servant of God. What's the difference? There are many differences. These are totally two different levels. When you worship God, you do some actions for the sake of God. If inshallah your ibadah is sincere, so you are doing something for the sake of God. But abd is different. What is, in your opinion, what is the difference? Abd is not the one who just does something for his master. Abd is the one <coughs> whose very life is for master. Abd, if he is doing ibadah, so he's worshipping. But if he is, for example, sitting or sleeping, he's not doing ibadah. Yeah? For example, now it's night, this Abid sleeps a few hours to wake up for tahajjud. When he's sleeping, he's not doing about that. Okay? Or for example, we do about that when we pray, we fast, but we also work. We have our own life, we have our own business, you know, we do things, you know, lots of things we do, which are not about that. We do it for our own pleasure, for our own, I don't know. Uh, personal reasons. But what about Abd? Abd is the one who has dedicated himself to his master. <coughs> if you have a servant, whether that servant is doing something or just sitting waiting for an order to come, <laughs> he is servant. Yeah, maybe right now you don't have anything for him to do for you, but he's a servant. Maybe he's now sleeping, but he's a servant. Maybe he's ill in hospital, cannot do anything for his master, but he's a servant. Yeah, no master would say, he is no longer my servant because he's ill. No, he says, my master, my servant. So, Abd is the one who has given his entire life to his master. Once uh, in Dar es Salaam, uh, one of the brothers asked me, what is, you know, the meaning of Abd? I said, one meaning of Abd is the 
one that his identity comes from his master. You know, if you ask a real servant who you are, what would he say? He would never mention his name. He says, I am servant of so-and-so. Yeah? If you ask, for example, servant of a king, who you are? He says, I am servant of king. He doesn't mention his name because his name is not important. What is my greatest honor? My belonging to my master. Ilahi kafa bi izan an akuna laka abda. Wa kafa bi fakhran an takuna li rabba. As honor, it's sufficient for me to be your servant. As a matter of pride, it's sufficient for me that you are my master. Ilahi anta kama uhib. You have been showing your rububiyya. Let me also be able to show my servitude. If you ask the servant of king who loves the king, who has dedicated his life to king, has always been concerned about the interest of the king. If you ask who you are, what you are, he would just mention, I am servant of the king. Even if he has PhD, he wouldn't say, I am, you know, PhD. <laughs> what is my name? What is my family? No. What is my achievement? Nothing. The most important thing, I am servant of the king. This is the meaning of apt. When there used to be you know, a slavery, and you know, Islam very soon managed to stop it. First, regulate it, and then reduce it, and then stop it. So, it is said maybe after Islam, or maybe even not before Islam, a person went to buy a slave. You know, sometimes there were markets to buy the slaves. So, he wanted to buy a very good slave. So went around and found someone that looked special. He said, what's your name? The slave said, whatever you call me. What do you eat? Because some slaves may eat too much. So <laughs> it's expensive. So he wanted to see what he eats. Or maybe whether he can prepare for him the food. He said, whatever you give me, I'm not going to demand anything. I'm your you know, servant. If you want to feed me, you can feed me. If you don't want to feed me, I die. It's up to you. How much do you sleep? As much as you allow me. I don't have any you know, a specific you know, requirement. So he said, I am going to buy this one. Whatever is the cost. When a servant is empty from personal demands, then there is no value. You cannot say how much is the value. It's invaluable. So, when it comes to our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can have two types of relations. One is that most of mu'minin have, most of believers, they work with God as two parties in a business. They do something for God and then they charge God. God, you know, I have done this prayer for you, give me. I have fasted, give me. Okay, so they have set up for themselves a kind of territory, independent territory, 
They get into business with God and then they charge God. And this is only for a part of their life. For example, throughout the day, one hour they work for God. The rest of it, they work for their boss or for their company, for their own business, <laughs> for their own family. Just one hour they work for God. Maybe some people two hours for God. Okay? This is the relation of Ajir. Someone like you hire and you pay his salary. But he plans for himself. He plans for himself. 90% of Mu'minin, if not 99%, they plan for themselves. I want to go to this country, to live in this city, to do this business, to marry this person. Why? It's good for me. Not that my master, my rab wants me to be in this town or in this position or this job or marry this person or have this many number of children. No, it's good for me. But there is another level of relation. And that is when you dedicate your entire life to your master. So then it would be seven days of week, 24 hours you are apt. <coughs> because if you have dedicated yourself to master, even your sleeping is rewarded. Because obudi. Even if you become ill, you are rewarded. Even when you spend on yourself, this is rewarded. I am feeding myself. Why? Because I don't want my master to lose a servant. I am looking after my health because I don't want my master to have an ill servant. I look after also other servants of my master, but also I am one of the servants, so I should look after my servants. I look after my reputation. Why? Because my reputation is to serve my master. If I have any respect among people, I want to use it to take people towards my master. Then your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of a different you know, quality, of a different level. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, for example, says that my prayer, my rituals, my life, my death are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or for example, in Surah 6, Ayah 162, say, My Salat and Nusuk, like other people, but all my life is for my Lord. <coughs> and the beauty of someone who dedicates his life to God is then his death also becomes for God. How can your mamat be for God? You may say, you know, this is for martyrs. But this is not only for martyrs. Anyone who lives for the sake of God, then when he dies, also his death is accepted by God as dying for him. Your mahya and mamat both become for Allah SWT. So, inshallah, we continue this discussion after Salat. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Oh, 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 oh.